And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. Howdy folks, Darren back with you here at Cross Timbers Farm. Welcome to Eighth Day Chronicles. I'm Susan. And today is Goat Hoof Maintenance Care Day. Uh, we've got some goats here that we're going to be bringing one by one into the barn and uh, inspecting their hooves and trimming hooves and uh, just kind of giving them an overall look at their FAMACHA score and while they're on the stand and just giving them a quick assessment. But the main objective of today is hoof care and uh, it's that time the calendar has rolled around where we know it's time for us to inspect hooves and trim hooves and so we're going to get at that today um, in just a moment i'll let susan show you the tools she uses to trim hooves she's the hoof trimmer here not me i can do it but i don't do near as good of a job as she does so uh, we'll let her uh, explain kind of what she's doing and maybe if you own goats it'll, you can pick up a few uh, tips or tricks or something like that uh, for hoof trimming and if you have some tricks that you uh, use trimming your goat hooves uh, feel free to drop them below in the comments we'd sure like to hear them so uh, let's get with it okay we have some basic tools that we use for hoof trimming and one thing I wanted to go over real quick and I'll let Susan uh, describe some of the rest of these to you uh, probably one of the very main things that you have to have for hoof trimming is a pair of hoof trimmer and shears uh, here we have two pair you can see okay they don't really if you look at them on the surface they really don't look different you, you would look at them and think well those are six one half a dozen of the other you know there's really not much difference but trust me they are these we picked these up at like any farm supply store specifically i think we got these at tractor supply and they're the green handled ones and i'm not sure the name of them uh it's got a name there but i can't tell what that says but in any event these are common in most farm supply stores rural king tractor supply agri supply things like that you can pick them up and they're fairly inexpensive these do okay the green handled ones if you're if you have one or two goats and you trim hooves you know you got a couple of weed eaters around the farm or whatever and you trim hooves occasionally however these hoof trimmers will go dull so fast that it's unreal and to try to sharpen these is a chore I mean it's a chore uh, I kind of pride myself in being able to sharpen things and sharpening these was an absolute chore and when you do get them sharp it seemed like they do not hold an edge very good. Uh, a friend of ours recommended to us, we were talking about hoof trimmers and he recommended us to look at the ARS hoof trimmers and we bought a pair of ARS hoof trimmers, it's these in the red handle from Premier One and we paid probably a half again for a pair of these than we did these and it was worth every single penny these are so much better than these it's unreal these hold an edge they're very sharp out of the box they hold an edge and if they start to get dull i can take a file and a rock and have these things back to shaving sharp in no time and they will hold that edge. They're really good trimmers. If you trim hooves on a regular basis on sheep or goats, you owe it to yourself. If you have a pair of these, you owe it to yourself to try a pair of these ARS trimmers. They are so much better. So we'll let Susan go over some of the other tools and show you what she uses real quick before we get started. Okay. Um, when you're trimming hooves, you need a good pair of leather gloves. These actually are a little big on me compared to what I like to use, but they'll be fine for today. I use a hoof pick, just like you would use to clean your horse hooves. Um, just scrape out mud and brush away the dirt and, and manure and things like that. 
them. As Darren's already told you about these, I, what I like about these besides their sharpness is, is they fit my hands pretty good. And I have an anxious customer out there. Um, my hands are a little smaller and these just fit my hands better. It has a, a very strong, sturdy spring and I don't have to um, grip as hard. And when I'm doing, uh, today I'll be doing six animals, it, it really um, is beneficial to me. Um, I also just have, I have some hand sanitizer. Um, this is just Dakin solution that I use to um, soften any caked on mud. Um, then if we have a, a, if I get it into the quick, I use it to clean. Um, some baking soda, if we do get into the quick, I can use this as blood stop. Um, if I cut myself for them pretty bad, sometimes you have some anxious customers. Um, this is this is just um, some povidone iodine. Um, and then when we have our little bitty kids, the very first time I trim their hooves, I'll, I'll use this small thin pair. It's good for that. We use our milk stand. We get the animals up on the milk stand, put a little feed in their bucket. I can capture them in the head stall keep them a little more stationary um, and that's basically all the tools that you need to get started this is Lana <clears throat> Lana is about a year and a half old two and a half can't remember. I don't have my papers with me, but Lana was bred and at the end of September. We bred her to our purebred over Hosley um, rodeo. Rodeo is cold, so we're hoping that he throws that genetic. All right. Get my headlamp on here. All right. If she can, we'll cooperate a little bit. All right. So what you want to do when you're trimming hooves, I just want to get the mud out and what we're looking for is we're just going to trim down that hoof wall so that it's nice and flat. Take a little off the toe, not a lot. Her hooves actually don't look too bad. Alright, currently on the stand we have mud slide. Mud slide is typically really good on the milk stand. She's been freshened twice, so she's used to being up here. Her feet actually look good. When you're trimming, you really just want to make sure that your hoof walls are flat. Pad is flat. Hers really have not grown too much. She actually looks really good. She's not going to really require a lot today. Good job. Okay, so I'm just going to take my hoof pick and knock away any mud that I might have. Her hoofs actually look really good. It's hard to tell with the mud, but they're still really flat. There's no overgrowth at all on her walls. Um, just gonna make sure that her pads are flat. So just like with a horse, you just wanna make sure that the sides are flat and you wanna make sure that their toes are even and you trim on their pad. But basically, her hooves look really good. So she's not going to require a lot today. Oops. Sorry, girl. Anyway, come to this side. Whoa. Now her front ones are a little in a little worse shape. Now let's just see what we have here. And see that one is turned down just a little. Just want to make it flat. Very good. 
So this is the last foot for mudslide. You can see when you're finished, you just want everything to be flat and even. You don't want any high spots. You don't want to be into the quick. You want their toes to be nice and even. So I just kind of hold them together. She does have a little bit of her pad here that we could take off. Oops. And her hoof walls look really, really nice, especially for this time of year and as much rain as we've had. So again, with her pad, you just want to trim until it's flat. And if you start seeing pink, you definitely want to stop because you're into the quick. She does have a little bit of softness right here that we had to cut away. So the next time, we're gonna wanna make sure that we let this grow down a little bit more. Get that out. But that's it for mudslide. Um, we don't trim as much in the winter, so this will probably do her for a couple of months. Okay, well the goat hoof trimming is done for hopefully with it being winter time a couple of months at least um, I can honestly say that I would rather do both the boys than Lana by herself yeah well Lana has never been bred and Lana's two two and a half years old yeah but she's, she's been, been on the milk stand she's yeah but she's she's never been milked and used to being on a milk stand and when she first gets up on there she's ornery but she'll get used to it especially with her being bred now and uh she'll be on the milk stand a lot this coming spring and summer so yeah so we got um, all six of the goats done we forgot to introduce our new goat we have a new goat she's fox on fire ctd seven by seven um, we don't know what we're going to call her yet. We're still just kind of yeah, calling her. Yeah, that's her registered name, but we ain't Sweetie. decided what we're going to call her. She's a very friendly, sweet little goat. Um, yeah, she's small. Uh, so we got both the boys done. Both the boys got their copper bolus. Um, Stormy got her copper bolus. Darren mm -hmm. got a hoof trimming lesson. And just remember, when you're trimming hooves, just let the blades be your guide. Keep everything nice and flat and keep their toes even and not blunt. Keep them rounded. Um, if you start seeing pink, you're going a little too deep. Um, we checked everybody's FAMACHA scores. Everybody looks good. Um, copper's done for whoever needed it. So I think yep. we're set for wintertime. I, I really don't think unless we get really warm, wet winter, we probably won't need to trim hooves again until close to kitten season yeah, in till, February. Yeah, till spring, so. so hopefully. So we, we'll keep a check on them, though. We always, once a month, just... Pick each yeah, of feet up out in the pasture and just kind of look at them and Even see how the their winter. feet's doing. Yeah, how their feet's doing. Especially if you see an animal favoring a foot when it's walking around. But usually, we, we keep a check on them. Usually, what, weekly or every other week, yeah. kind of yeah. every animal in the pasture pick their feet up and kind of just glance at them and make sure there's no problems. Yeah, especially so. if you've had a lot of wet weather, you need to make sure that you're not getting developing any hoof rod or anything like that so yeah um, we've got the girls in for tonight tonight's supposed to tonight is supposed to be kind of icy snowy weather and we've got the girls up and yeah the the weather usually we've got sheds for them to go in and all that outside while they're in the pasture but usually if it's going to be inclement weather and i'm not talking about just you know a shower or something but if it's going to get really nasty out and windy and a lot of snow or ice especially sleet and freezing rain and all which they're predicting for us tonight some maybe some freezing rain and sleet and some a little bit of wind and so you know uh, be good stewards of your animals if you got room put them in the barn so ours are in the barn for tonight so. yeah especially we're pretty sure that mudslide and lana both are uh, at least let's see they should be close to um well, about nine, eight weeks into their gestation, so we want to make sure that they stay as comfortable as possible. Yeah, and Stormy was in season. Like earlier in the week. Yeah, yeah. Like over the over the weekend. Saturday and today's Monday, mm -hmm. and she was in season. She was in heat Saturday and part of Sunday, so she got put in 
Uh, jail time. Time out. Yeah. <laughs> she got put in floozy jail. <laughs> We so. uh, actually we put our little our new little gal in with the rodeo this afternoon because she was flagging and he showed some interest in her so we'll see. Yep, yep. I believe that uh, she is in season, so uh, I think rodeo probably did his job. So we'll see. All right. So All right. Um, once again, we used uh, what was the name of the shears that I like? Uh, ARS. ARS. Red handled shears, they fit my hands good, they stay sharp. Um, they do stay sharp. You, if they do start to get dull on you, you can take a a, a bastard file or a, you know, a stone and, and give them a few strokes and they're back sharp. Yeah, so that's our tips for hoof trimming. Use good shears. Um, the ARS work good for me with smaller hands. Uh, I like to trim on the milk stand. You kind of keep your animals contained. Um, make sure that you're doing um, even cuts, keeping everything flat. Um, use that time to check your Fomacha scores. Um, look for hoof rot. Um, if you have any issues with getting into the quick, just use a little baking soda, something like that for blood stock. Yeah, and speaking of hoof rot, we don't have much of a problem with hoof rot, but if you ever do, um, I would recommend Copper Tox. It's, it's used in horses for the same mm -hmm. thing, for thrush, but uh, it was, it's the, really it's the same thing So in, in a goat or just, sheep as yeah, it is in horses. Just so. be aware if you use Copper Tox, put you on some old, old gloves that you don't care to ruin because they're going to be green when you're done. <laughs> and smell for a long time. And stain, time. and that stain will never come out. Um, so some goats do well. Some are a rodeo. Actually, our rodeo did not live up to his name. He was no. an outlaw. Were actually the easiest ones I did today. So. so I figured when we put rodeo on the stand, he was going to live up to his name. It was going to be a rodeo. He and actually went on the stand. Man, he was a perfect anybody. gentleman, yeah, wasn't he? He was great. He was a gentleman. Little, okay, yeah. So to finish up again, trim, trimming hooves. Um, use your ARS. We recommend ARS red-handled shears. They stay sharp. They sharpen easy. They the spring is good fits your hands good we like to trim in the summertime about every four to six weeks a little less in the winter use that to look time to look for hoof rot um, for matcha scores that's a good time also to do any medications that you might need to do and uh, keep your animals healthy it starts with their feet yep yep sure does all right all we're right. done for the evening thank you for being with us we appreciate it god bless and have a good evening